Building Foods HQ. Hey guys, what's up? Paul Niyama, Muscle Building Foods HQ. So this video is kind of a continuation of last time where I was talking about some of the tricky buzzwords, these marketing tactics that food manufacturers use to make you buy products, these words that make a product sound healthy, and their actual definition. And I gotta tell you, I was pretty surprised myself, which is why you can't just go by the food label. You can check out the video clicking here or go by the link down below. But in this video, I'm talking about what will really tell you if a food is healthy. The nutrition label and the ingredient list. So let's go into some of the basics here because I know a lot of people don't really know what to look for when they're looking at these things. And some people look at the wrong things. If you live in the US, you probably recognize this. That is a nutrition fact sheet. And I just chose this one randomly. It's for pecans in case you're curious. But one of the main places that people get tricked is at that serving sizes right there. So a lot of times manufacturers will put a real small serving size so that you think you're getting less calories than you actually are. One of the worst places that it used to be is soda. They used to have serving size as two or two and a half per can, which is ridiculous because who's going to drink half a can of soda and save the other half for later? Most people just drink one can. They've changed it. That doesn't mean every single product has changed it. So be careful. Look at the serving size. If you're getting more than one serving, just make sure that you're multiplying it. All these numbers, your calories, your fats, your protein, everything needs to be multiplied if you're getting more than one serving. So if you work your way down the list, you'll see calories, you'll see fats. Both of these are important. One thing I want to point out is that trans fats. These are the really bad ones. These are the ones that's linked to heart disease, all those negative effects, really bad. Good thing is the government in the US banned this last year, but they did give the food manufacturers until 2018 to fully get it out of food. So there are still some foods that have trans fats. Don't be misled though. Just because it has a zero here doesn't mean it's really zero. It needs to be under half a gram for it to be counted as zero. So. If you're getting multiple serving sizes, this trans fats could add up. The real place you wanna look for trans fats is in an ingredient list, and I'll talk about that as I get down to the ingredients. Let's keep working our way down. You got sodium, cholesterol, I don't pay too much attention to these. Um, and then you got your carbohydrates. This one is really important for people that are trying to go low carb. So if you're keeping your carbs low, or you're keeping your carbs high, depending if you're gaining or losing weight, Pay attention to that. Sugars are very important. I try to keep sugars under 25 grams per day because sugars really aren't good for you. Has some inflammatory effects, has some long-term negative side effects, really not good. Again, just because it says zero, you need to pay attention to the serving sizes because there, it means it's under half a gram, 0.5 grams, and it could add up if your serving sizes are a lot. You're gonna have to look into the ingredient list for this one as well. I will cover that as I get down to the ingredient lists. And right under the sugar is the protein, which is important. That's what's gonna build the muscle. That's what's gonna get you into shape. And recommended amount of protein per day is between 0.6 and one gram of protein per pound of body weight. What does that mean? If you're not too into math, if you weigh 100 pounds, you're gonna need about 60 to 100 grams of protein a day. 150 pounds, you're gonna need about 90 to 150 grams of protein per day. And if you weigh 200 pounds, you're gonna need about 120 to 200 grams of protein per day and so on and so on. Back to the nutrition list. If you look over at the right side, you'll see a bunch of percentages. And to me, these are not too important because if you look at the fine print down below, these recommendations are based on a 2,000 calorie, high carb, low fat diet, which is not always appropriate for people. 2,000 calories, for some people that's too much, for some people that's too little. So right there, that's not good. And as far as the high carb, low fat, not always the most appropriate for people if you're trying to lose weight. I usually go with high fat, low carb. But again, this don't pay attention to percentages too much. Interesting note though, the two worst things, the trans fats and the sugar, no percentages by them. 
interesting. Let's move on to the ingredient list. So the next thing you want to look at is the ingredient list. This is where you're going to find out a lot about the foods. Now the order that these ingredients are listed in is important because the thing that's most prevalent in the food is going to be listed first and then it's going down in descending order. So you want to see a lot of red flags right in the beginning. First thing you want to look for is your trans fat. Again, these are going to be taken off the market hopefully soon, but they're still there. Things you want to look for to notice if it has a trans fat is the word hydrogenated oil. Sometimes you'll see partially hydrogenated, sometimes you'll see fully hydrogenated, sometimes it's just hydrogenated. Any one of these things is bad. Usually partially hydrogenated is the worst, but you don't want to see any of these things in the foods you're eating. Next red flag is your sugars. Now there's a lot of different names for these. There's dozens and dozens of names for sugars. Some of the most common ones is just plain old sugar. Then you have the chemical name for sugar, which is sucrose. You got high fructose corn syrup. You have beet juice, cane juice, pretty much anything that ends with O-S-E, dextrose, maltose, fructose, is a sugar. You want to avoid these. I'm going to list a bunch of them in the description box down below just so you can start to recognize some of these. And then you have your industrial omega-6 seed oils. These are things that cause a lot of inflammation. Not good. Inflammation could lead to a lot of problems. The three most common are going to be canola oil, soybean oil, and corn oil. So watch out for those. Let's take a look at some actual ingredient list. Uh, in general, you want these to be as short as possible. You don't want a long ingredient list with a bunch of chemicals. This first one is for a meal replacement shake. And if you look at it, it's a pretty long ingredient list. A lot of different ingredients there. And if you look at some of the first few ingredients, you'll see it has a bunch of sugars and it has seed oils. Not a good meal replacement shake in my view. Next thing is for a banana granola peanut butter. It sounds good, but you got all three major red flags here. You got your sugars, you got your industrial seed oils, and you've got your hydrogenated oils. Not good. Stay away from this one no matter how good it sounds. And this last ingredient list is for a popular cookie. This is another triple whammy. You got a bunch of sugars here. You have the industrial seed oils and hydrogenated oils. If you see this cook in the store, run away, get away from it. So I hope this gets you looking at your foods a little differently. You can start to see some of these red flags. Just remember though, the best foods aren't gonna have labels. You're gonna find them in the meat section, in the veggie section. Good, healthy stuff. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and you can stay notified whenever I put up a new video. I'm planning to do one every week. And make sure you get my ebook because there's a lot of good tips in there. It's free. Just uh, hit that button there or you can click the link down below. I will see you next time. Paul Miyama, Muscle Building Foods, HQ.com.